I thought it might be helpful just to show you how to edit an existing turn base and how you can use this in studio the way you want to use it. So if I open up the turn base, I just created a very simple turn base with a couple of terms in there, just to give you an idea. Now, if I look at the turn base management on this turn base and go to the definition, you can see I've got no fields in there other than the defaults. So it's just an English to Welsh and that's it, nothing else, with an entry level, index level and term level. So it's a straightforward, simple source term, target term. Now if I want to add um, a draft status field to it, or a draft field of it, to it of some kind, all I need to do is click on the definition here under the term base management. And then if I edit that term base definition, brings up the wizard, I can go through the different steps. The languages are going to be okay because these are for my project. And then I get these descriptive fields in my, in my steps. And I can enter in here any type of label I want. It's just the name of the field. It can be absolutely anything. So if I want to call it status, I just type status in there. But I can call it whatever I like. I'd call it Chun Yi status if you like. Chun Yi status. With a hyphen and I add that. What I then do in my properties, it doesn't have to be a pick list, it could just be text, but a pick list allows me to have a little bit more control over what gets added so it's always consistent. So maybe I'll just add a couple of pick list fields in there. So I'll have draft and then maybe I'll have approved and maybe I'll even have a rejected maybe. I can have as many as I like and whatever I like. That's my fields added. What I do then is on the next part of the window, this is my basic structure of the term base at the moment, which is just the defaults. And now I can add this field, descriptive field to any of those levels I want. Because I want to do it on the term, I select status, the term, and I just click add. And this adds it over at the term level. And then I click on next and finish. If it's a big term base, it might be worth running a reorganizer at this point. But if it's just a small one like this, there's no point in running a reorganizer. So leave it as it is. And what we see now is I have this extra field on the bottom, the Chun Yi status. It's a pick list, and there's my different pick list values. So when I go to add a new term the next time, when you add a term, you don't see them at first. But if I click on the little drop down, you can see I get this Chun Yi status. And because you have to do this extra bit of work and because you'd have to select it every time, you might want to create what's called an input model to make it easy to be able to do this. So if everything you, you every time you add a term to begin with, if you want it to be set as draft, for example, then you could create an input model to do that. So do that, go back to your term based management, go to the input models and say create. Brings up another little wizard to make it nice and easy for you, and we'll call this the Chun Yi input model. I've just used your name here to emphasize the fact that these can be called anything you like. Multi term is infinitely flexible, it's not forcing you to do anything in a particular way. And what you do now is in here you specify which, which fields you actually want to come up when you add them. So I'm going to, in the entry level, I'm going to say, okay, always add the Welsh. I just double click it and always add the English. But maybe I only want to add the, uh, the draft status onto one of them. So I might just say, for example, I want to add it on the English. I'll say, show new status and add it just on the English. If I want that status on the Welsh as well, I could add it on the Welsh, but there's not much point in doing that because um, in the translation, I'm going from Welsh to English. So the Welsh term is clearly going to be correct. It's the debatable one is going to be the English one. So I'll just put this term status on the English for my input model. So I click on, oh, sorry, then I want to set a default value. So I click on change status, go to the default value and I'll make it draft. And I say next and finish. If I go back to my terms now and up to the input model, you'll see I've now got this Chun Yi input model. And if I select that and then click on add new, 
you see now how it's already set up as draft. This is really handy because you can use this in studio. So I close this now because I've got my turn base and I'm pretty happy with that. And if I open up studio, okay, um, and then I go to my my project, go to my project settings. You see, I've got my turn base here. Turn base is already set, so I don't need to worry about that. Click on OK. I open this up. And what I can do inside the turn base viewer, you see here there's an input model. You just need to make sure that that input model is set to use the one that you created. You can have as many input models as you like. So if it's a very complicated turn base, you might want to have different types of input models for different stages of your translation. It's entirely up to you. It's completely flexible. I'm just going to um, lock this into place for the time being. I'll put this over here like that. Okay, and let's say I wanted to just add a couple of terms. Um, so maybe I'll have um, users. Click add new term. And you can see I've added the term straight away. And it's added it with the draft status, exactly the one I wanted, because that's what I set up on my endpoint model. So it's very, in fact, it's no work at all. It's a piece of cake to go through and add my terms now, just by adding them, selecting them as I'm working along. So if I wanted to add um, project C, and I can quick add a new term, there's another one. So I'm adding the terms with the fields automatically as I'm working. It's really, really simple and straightforward. So that makes it a piece of cake. Hopefully that makes it clear, and you'll see how you can adapt your client term base to add a new field if you want one and then how you can use it in studio by taking advantage of the input models. These are little things that people don't often realize that multi-term is capable, capable of doing. There's a lot of capabilities in multi-term that can really make your life a lot easier when you're working. If you just knew, if you just know about a few little things. I hope that's helpful anyway.